So we just normalized a vector. That was the last thing we did. Took a vector divided by its magnitude. That gives us a length one or a unit vector in that direction. And of course, the cross product with the right hand rule, which he thought was very funny. That has your first vector, second vector, and then your thumb is the perpendicular vector to those two. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention about the right hand rule, have both of your fingers point the same direction, so vector one and two pointing the same way. How many directions can your thumb go that's perpendicular to those two vectors? There's at least one. There's always going to be two, but this way you can rotate your thumb all the way around these two vectors, and it's always perpendicular. So there's another reason why the right hand rule doesn't give you a perpendicular vector if your original two are parallel, because there's an infinite number of choices for perpendicular. So that's another geometric way to think about the rule that's somewhere back here. Did that somewhere. Oh, parallel vectors are anti-parallel. We got that their cross product will be zero. And one of the geometric ways to think about it is your vectors are parallel. There's not one vector that's perpendicular. There's an infinite number of vectors. All right, well, let's do an area question. So I want to find the area of a parallelogram with these following vertices. So our first point will be 0, 0, 0. Actually, let's go with 1, 1, 1. There's going to be four points. So our second point will be 4, negative 1, 2. Our third point, 0, 4. Four, zero, and last point, three, two, one. All right, what did I say about graphing in three dimensions? It's difficult. It's difficult. You're not gonna really going to get anything by trying to graph things. Unless you use a computer program, you are limited to one, uh, basically one perspective or one viewpoint. So <clears throat> what does parallelogram look like? I'm just going to draw a generic parallelogram, and I'm going to label the points around the edge. Turns out it doesn't even matter the order you put them down, as long as you just label each vertice once. So I'm just going to go P1, P2, P3, P4. So I see area of a parallelogram. Well, area is not something we've computed before. Let's look back in the notes and see what we have about areas. Here's some area stuff right here. All right, we have area of a parallelogram. What is different about the information? So it's basically area is a cross product of two vectors. These vectors correspond to the vectors that are on the sides. So we're going to have to get two vectors, and then the area will be the cross product of the two vectors on the side. So we don't have any vectors. So I'm going to draw in two vectors. So one of them will be u, the other one will be v. All right, so if I choose these two vectors for u and v, what is u in terms of two points? So I know this was from before your midterm, and you probably had a clean wipe on your brain after your midterm. So remember, vectors, if you have two points, a vector between them is the end point minus the start point. So what two points for the vector u, what two points, what is the end point? 
So the fourth point, or P4, is at the end, and P1 is at the beginning. So this is going to be P4 minus P1. So we're subtracting points to get the vector between them. Vector U is really, or vector V is really similar. It's going to be end minus start. What vector, what two vectors are we subtracting for V? P2 minus P1. So we're going to go ahead and make these computations. So I'm just writing in the coordinates. So we got 3, 2, 1 minus 1, 1, 1. And P2, 4, negative 1, 2. Minus 1, 1, 1. Now these are turning into vectors, so they were points, so we're writing them with parentheses. They're turning into vectors, so we're switching to diamond brackets. So 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And second vector, 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. And 2 minus 1 is 1. All right, any questions on the 2, 1, 0 or the 3, negative 2, 1? All right, we don't really know that the parallelogram is really ordered in this way that I drew the points out. So maybe you drew it out differently and you use this vector v. So I'll just. So let's say that you use that vector v, but you happen to use this other vector right here as w, and you completely didn't use u whatsoever. What parallelogram would be formed with these two sides? I'll draw the rest of this parallelogram out. So I'm going to have a copy of w right up here, and a copy of v right there. So I just extended that parallelogram just by taking two sides. It turns out the green area is the same as the original area. This extra piece right here, if you just move it over, it's the other piece right there. So it doesn't matter the order, you'll get the same area. Different parallelogram, same area. Basically it comes down to triangles is really what it comes down to. You're just looking at two triangles. All right, so <clears throat> you don't have to compute uh, the second way, but I'm, when we actually run the computation, I'm going to have half of you use u and v, and the other half of you use w and v. And we should get the same answer at the end. So we'll write down w and v. Now v, I'm not going to spend the time recalculating. It's the same v that's down there below, 3 minus 2, 1. W, I do need to calculate though. What two points is W? So, uh, which point minus which other point? P3 minus P1. Yep, P3 minus P1. And P3 is 0, 4, 0. Sometimes you're going to feel lazy and not like writing down commas. If it's obvious where commas should go, you don't have to write them down every time. So we're going to get vector minus 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, 0 minus 1 minus is minus 1. All right, so if you use W and V, your area is going to be W cross V. So first compute the cross product and then compute the area. The area is also going to equal the magnitude of u cross v. All right, so we're going to split the room. Let's do, uh, most of you are on the right side. All right, let's split it right down here. So only if you're sitting in this leftmost seat, then you're going to go with the, this side of the room. 
So if you're on the left side, let's go with W. And if you're on the right side, go with V. All right. So if you're in the left half, you're going with W. If you're in the right half, you're going with V. And I'll try to go compute both of them. You're right. All right, so cross product first, set up with the IJK notation. So any cross product questions? There's a couple triple negatives that turn into just a single negative sign. Some double negatives I probably didn't write down. Just wrote positive. Be careful, it's usually the double and triple negatives that mess people up. And don't forget your middle coordinate's always negative. It's a little sneaky, but your middle coordinate's always the negative what it looks like. So it goes plus minus plus. All right, so either way, you should get 3 square root 6 or square root 54 if you don't reduce it. Let's <coughs> look back at some other ways that we could have written vectors down. I picked P1 as my point to 
uh, send all my vectors out of. There's no reason you have to choose P1. I could have done the same thing using this P2. And then I would have went, my two vectors out of here would have been, I could have really chosen any two, but I could have used the two adjacent sides, or I could have gone with those two. And either way, I'll get the same area. The important thing is you want to pick one point and send your vectors out from that point. So here's what you uh, shouldn't do. Start with two separate points and then use these two vectors. Those two vectors don't form a parallelogram. So parallel vectors don't form a parallelogram. You have to choose two vectors that are not parallel. What would I get if I cross these two vectors that are parallel? Right. Think about right hand rule if your vectors are parallel. Zero. You get the zero vector because there's not, there's not a single direction that's perpendicular. There's an infinite number of directions. So if you have two parallel vectors, you're going to get zero when you cross them. So if you're doing an area problem, you get zero. This is most likely what you did. You made two vectors that were parallel. All right, so that's the end of cross products. And just remember, there is on Canvas a link to the cross product section in a uh, different textbook. But there's no cross products in your textbook.